So, the triangle of tone, part three. Um, so we've talked about this, this, this whole thing for snares and vocals. Let's talk a bit more about specifics of HMX and Iron and the ASP 800. Because, you know, theoretically, we've got these two extra flavors which can, I think for me, the ultimate preamp would be one where we could shade the whole circle. Yeah, yeah. Get absolutely every single. Might be hard to use. <laughs> Probably way too many controls and yeah. completely unfathomable. Color grading dials like you get for video editing. <laughs> but, you know, you've probably got pretty close in there. Thanks. I, I, we've definitely got really useful flavors to map around the triangle. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, we can start with this one here in red and map it out yeah, and see what see we, we get. So, I mean, how would you describe, because you use one regularly, how would you describe the basic mic pre tone of the audience? You know, you've had one for you know 10 years plus the 008 and then the, the 880 and the 800 I think you've tried so that's all three um, um, rack mount ooh, where would I go I mean they're certainly clean they're cer I would say they're very clean very non coloring yeah. un uncolored even it's probably so much better English completely uncolored would you say well, or a little bit of something in there tiny bit so maybe we we'll go here well oh no wait we can't go there that, we we'll go here other end yeah that end there's a little bit of something there. Um, I would say they're certainly fast for, for drums and things. Yeah. Um, Not super quick, but quick enough. Yeah, and I wouldn't say they were hard or... I mean, they're, they're quite neutral sounding, so they're probably... They are neutral in there, I think. Yeah, yeah. so, so you'd probably... Go here. Boom. You know, there's our... That's ASP. Yeah. That's the normal ASP. Well, it's the same pre-circuit, isn't it? In the yeah, identical in all of the products actually, yeah. from the interfaces all the way to the consoles. Yeah, mm. I mean, we make small optimizations for different power supplies and that sort of thing. But we have a effectively, it's quite it's funny, but it's a sheet of paper handwritten by David did and with his sort of like benchmark measurements for the mic amp as to you know if the audio mic pre works properly, it does this, and that's what we hit every time. That's the yeah. trick. That's the trick. If, that, that's, yeah. if, that, if you can achieve that, then jobs are good. Yeah. But then we wind in HMX. HMX. Yeah, I'll do that in blue, maybe black. And what would you say when we turn on HMX? Obviously, you've noticed already low settings, medium and high. It changes. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on. There's a, but I mean, it's, it's definitely more. I would friendly to bass instruments. Much more bottom end. It's not. It's not high end like. Crackle, it's kind of like a warming, a saturation. Yeah. Um, so it's more, dirt it pulls almost. It more colourful. Yeah, definitely. Is it softer or hard sounding distortion? I would say the... softer. It's softer, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. That's the MOSFETs when they, yeah. they effectively asymmetrically clip the waveform in a little bit three times. So when you get to the end, there's a lot of distortion, but nothing's really clamped it super hard. It's, it's soft. Okay, so with, with HMX, you've got, you know, slightly soft. Um, pretty coloured. It's soft because of the asymmetrical clipping of those MOSFETs doing a little bit in three stages. Um, and because of that, I think it's not overly fast. It's, yeah, it's probably quite a slow, yeah. slow... Again, we use like terms like warm and yeah. stuff like that. So it definitely fits in the bottom sort of, should yeah. we say, the bottom uh, left of, the, of the, the, the circle. Yeah, I think if you listen to it on transient material, because we are overemphasizing the low, lower mids and low end a little bit, uh, and then the soft saturation, it has a rounded clip to the waveforms. It's a, I know guitar players will get into this, but you know, in guitar distortion pedals, clipping diodes are obviously really you know, popular now because mm. people understand how a tube screamer works or how the various pedals work. And so you, you'll buy the same type of distortion circuit and they'll vary the, it's a MOSFET or it's a germanium diode or it's a silicon and they all have different knees or different ways they turn on, much like a, you know, an LED turns on quite hard, mm. quite quickly. Germanium's quite soft. Well, a MOSFET's actually pretty soft as well. And so because of this, HMX alone, when you overdrive it, has a slightly sort of slower sound. So it wouldn't be, you know, out of the question to say that HMX sits over over there somewhere and gives you the ability to move, you know, the audio mic pre towards soft, slow and coloured if required. Mm. You know, and going back to your example of say the like the snare, if you were doing your ballad drum and you wanted to get a loose, low, ringy, deep snare sound, 
using HMX on top of whatever mic and tuning you've picked to then, you know, make it slightly slower and softer and really like laying that backbeat into the yeah. back of the, you know, the emotional heart of the song, then a little bit of HMX would, would help there. Um, so that, that works really well to sort of see it across the whole chain of, of your recording. Um, and then of course, to the yin yang it, we've got the iron circuit. Yeah, and I would say that's very much more bright, brittle almost, um, still quite coloured, still quite yeah. um, tonally interesting. It's, it's far from sort of neutral. Um, it's obviously very fast because it deals much better with symbols, transient stuff, I think. Yeah, it's, it's actually cleaner. Like, so where, where HMX has lo lots of cascaded distortion, Iron has one effective drive amplifier and a, and a buffer. So we've actually kept the noise floor and the overall distortion very, very low. In fact, um, I don't know whether you've noticed, when it's on maximum, it's actually got the lowest distortion profile in the mid-range mm. out of any knob position on the Iron control. So it actually gets cleaner the more you turn it up in the mid-range. But, but the top end, gets the top end gets area yeah and the low end the transformer saturates and the drive amplifier runs out of an ability to drive the transformer at low end so the anything really bassy gets an insane amount of distortion more than hmx right but if you don't run bass into it and you run something more transient and you know acoustic guitar or, or something really sparkly then you'll find you can turn H, uh, iron up quite far and it, it, the mid-range almost has like a depth to it, a sort of softer depth because it's not very distorted, it's not coming forwards because it's not got lots of harmonics added. But then there's the sparkle that happens to the phase and frequency response in the really high end, about 15k, 12 to 15k. And the low end gets this sort of transformer slowing. So what's really crazy about transformers is that you could do a triangle for different frequency parts of the signal. Right. So without trying to draw this now, if you imagine the low end gets um, you know, a little bit harder potentially because of the magnetic sort of uh, even or uh, sorry, odd order symmetrical distortion. Um, so that's more third or harmonic or odd harmonic over there. Um, but it gets quite coloured, and you could argue a little bit sluggish because the transformer has to sort of um, pass that flux effectively and deal with that low end. Whereas the high end, it gets harder. A little bit faster, perceivably faster, because you get that sort of like forwardness of the lift of the ring, the ringing of the top of the transformer. So snare drums, side sticks, they get a little bit quicker. But the mid range actually gets a tiny bit cleaner. So you imagine doing a chart with a transformer, it actually mushes your audio across this circle, you know, which is quite interesting. And that's pretty much why most designers in the 80s and 90s tried to remove transformers from the audio <laughs> because you know they were just sort of mushing parts of the frequency spectrum differently. But when you get into classic old gear, it's that, you know, the air that you get from the top, the, the sort of extra delivery in the lower mid-range from the saturation and the, the fact that the actual mid-range around one, two kilohertz can still be pretty natural. So mm. it's like it kind of enhances the top and bottom, but the middle stays, you know, usable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fantastic um, setting parameter, there's the phrase I'm looking for, to be able to pull in to a snare drum, for example, because mm. you end up with a really interesting sounding snare. And I, I use the phrase interesting, I mean, you certainly can't categorise it, I don't think. It's just, you end up with a great, uh, a fat, yet bright, yet attacking sounding snare. Now all of those don't necessarily go together, yeah. but try it. So I suppose that's what we should do, really. So we've talked about it. In fact, we've talked about it quite a lot. A lot. Um, so let's have a listen. Let's, yeah. um, we're going to intercut this with some stuff of me in the studio using um, the ASP800 on some of my stuff, on my drums and bits and pieces. Amazing. But let's have a listen to the, 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 the demo reel, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, well, we did a, a load of clips to sort of show all the various things you could, you could get from it because, you know, you don't want to necessarily use each saturation combined. Sometimes you just use a touch of HMX, sometimes just a touch of iron, maybe the two together. Um, so we'll start with this vocal, which is from one of our earlier videos with Emily recorded, uh, Andy recorded Emily, I think with the Sontronics microphone, just the, the flat audio mic pre. Good choice. And there you go. <laughs> so just the flat audio mic pre, um, and this is the, the flat vocal. Can you picture us on a beach in the sun, playing by the sea? Or to millions of faces in hundreds of places, it's all within our reach. 
So, I mean, that's the, the dry, effectively. How would you describe that as a tone? I, I know what I hear with it. It's, but... it's, quite, it's nice and clean. It's quite flat sounding. It's not even sounding. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I would say that she's clean, she's neutral, but maybe the vocal sits in the speaker just a tiny bit. It's, sort of it's, it's held back yeah, by something. Yeah, it feels, feels boxed in for... Yeah, which is normally what you find, I think, with a, a vocal cut in a small booth with a, a vocal mic nice and close, is that... You know, it doesn't necessarily, you know, obviously you will EQ that and, you know, play. It doesn't with. really breathe. It's not breathing so much, yeah, and that, that's what you get very, very clean. Um, if we then go to the processed. Can you picture us on a beach in the sun, playing by the sea? Or to millions of faces in hundreds of places, it's all within a reach. You automatically grin because you can. It's, it just sounds more interesting. It doesn't sound as flat. It's more more open, more airy. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, what I would say that it brings the vocal out of the speaker, out of the tweeter, so it's forward by two or three inches. And you know, you've mentioned before, manipulating the depth of the mix to sort of maybe position the vocal um, or position the source. You can look at HMX9 as ways of doing that by pushing them back with HMX, maybe, or bringing them forwards in the top end with iron. Um, and that's really really what they're good for and it's great on a vocal to show that sort of sparkle that you get at the top end. And if you don't do that while tracking, because maybe you're not sure of where you want it to sit, you can always just effectively reamp through, re-preamp, is that a term that we've re just... Re-pre, re -pre. I like that. Re-pre. Um, and run a bit in, in real time. Yeah, mix. yeah. I mean, the, the the unit comes with line inputs and two DIs on the front. So you know, I personally like it for recording drum machines or synthesizers, that kind of thing. Um, you know, and if yeah, if you don't want to commit to it, then it's a processing tool. That's the beauty of it. It's not just a, an H-channel mic pre. It's a it's an effects processor. Mm. If you want to use so, then you know, it's a nice way of getting that authentic analog processing instead of using saturation plugins, maybe. So place your hands. On my hope, put your fingers through my soul. All right now, oh, but the way that you feel right now, oh Lord, let me go. So place your hands. On my hope, put your fingers through my soul. All right now, open oh, up the way that you feel right now. Oh Lord, let me go. So place your hands. On my hope, put your fingers through my soul. All right now, all about the way that you feel right now. Oh Lord, let me go.